Hey, Harry, congratulations again on your leading role in the movie, All My Life. Thanks. So can you please talk about your journey from Glee to a leading role in All My Life? Uh, yeah, you know, um, it's been a, it's been a long road. You know, it's, it sometimes feels like it happened in a flash and then, and there's times where, you know, you, you think about all those little moments and, and then uh, kind of hardships of just uh, uh, kind of getting uh, to that place where you get to play, uh, you know, roles that have a little more significance to the story. Um, so, you know, Glee, I, I, it, I was just this wide-eyed kid that, you know, loved to dance and, you know, wanted to pursue acting as well. So it was just the perfect combination to, to be on a show that I can sing, dance, and, and, and act. And um, I learned so much from, from not just uh, uh, being on set, but just being around incredibly talented people from all walks of life. Uh, and and from, from then on, getting to do really, really interesting roles, you know, going to, to work with Michelle Yeoh and Donnie Yen on Crouch and Tiger and uh, to uh, playing this iconic uh, uh, character in, on, on Shadowhunters, Magnus Bane, who, uh, you know, to me was, was such a, such a, had so much insight on the LGBTQ community um, to portray a, a character, a bisexual character that really uh, defied, defied stereotypes and, and really was just a unique being um, and unapologetic of who he was. Uh, so to, to be able to, to play that really signified, um, you know, that I was heading towards the right direction of, of being able to just uh, play these characters that I admired and, you know, coming to this and all my life, uh, having to play uh, someone who exists in real life and then to, to not just be inspired by them, but to, to also have the responsibility of, of carrying their message across um, uh, and this love story that, that was just so beautiful and, and also so tragic in so many ways, but uh, uh, finding the, the complexity of, 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 of not just the relationship, but of the things that was going on in, in, in Saul's head uh, was it's, so looking back, I mean, just talking about this right now, it's kind of crazy to sum it all up. I feel like I'm talking so much, uh, but I, I'm just really, just so much gratitude. I'm just filled with so much gratitude to, to be in the place where I, I, I'm at right now. Yeah, I know this is based on a true story. So tell us what you learned about the life of Solomon Chow and talking to his wife, Jennifer Carter. Uh, yeah, so Jen, uh, I, I didn't get to actually sit and talk to her uh, until probably uh, kind of like a week or two into, in, into shooting. I got a lot of my information from the stuff that she sent through and digitally uh, and, and, and her conversations with Jessica, but um, that was really, really helpful to, to have her be able to, to give us um, these tools and, and from even what I was able to draw from, from the stories and pictures and videos, I think says so much about a person and how you can see how they interact and uh, like little nuances and little um, just uh, gestures and reactions. But what was really, um, really a gift uh, to us as, as performers is Jen being so brave and, and understanding to know that the best way to carry that message across for her was to not uh, have to mimic them or, or, or uh, um, impersonate them. And it was, it was more about how we can connect with each other to best tell this story and, and, and provide this, this chemistry that they had. Um, and for us as actors to be able to, to portray that. And um, one thing that I did that I've never done was uh, uh, I, had a, I had a couple of pictures of Saul and I, I, would, I would just have a conversation. And, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was happening in my head or, or what it was, but I did feel a certain connection of, of something steering me towards, uh, towards a place that I never knew that I, I could go or would think of to go. Um, so there was something happening um, that, that was very out of body experience. Um, and I, I think it was a combination of, of, of everything that Jessica uh, uh, as, as an actress was doing and the stories that Jen would share uh, with me uh, when we had dinner. And um, also the presence of, of 
I, I think Saul, who, who, mm -hmm. who I definitely felt. Yeah, Solomon also proposed to Jennifer in an unusual way. So talk about your proposal to your wife, who is of Filipino descent. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, I, I think with all couples, you know, you go through up and up and down, ups and downs um, in your relationships. And um, I, 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 she recently, uh, at that time, lost her father. And, um, and, you know, I had this plan that was going and I was like, I don't know if it was the right time to, 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 to do that. And, you know, I wanted to respect, um, you know, the emotions that kind of have to, that have to be processed uh, for anyone going through something like that, and especially someone who I love dearly. And, um, but we went to Hawaii. I had a film festival that I go to. So it was a perfect situation where it wasn't like, oh, why are you taking me to Hawaii? So I, I, I had that little like juking and I got to, got to fake out. Um, so I, 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 we rode scooters around because, you know, what I love about Shelby, she's just so down to earth, she's down for anything. So we scootered around and it was like kind of raining and it was like a little dangerous. So I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm really putting her through this ringer uh, to propose to her. And then we finally landed on this beautiful beach. The sun started coming up. It was just like a perfect situation. Um, but I had to navigate that because when I, where I wanted to propose, I had the ring out and she was, had her back turned to me. There was, um, a man who was like half naked like like his belly out and trying to fish i was like oh that's not a good scenic <laughs> place to propose so i kind of shuffled her along further down to the uh beach that was a little more private and intimate and um i didn't expect it but i was just like super emotional I, she turned around i already had tears in my eyes and she <laughs> she was just wondering what was wrong and um, I got down one knees and, and it was just this, uh, this moment that was, I'll never forget that um, I, I, I knew that this uh, was special before, but at that moment, it was something that um, I knew I was, uh, I was, it was a very special, small, intimate moment that I think the, the gesture for me in my heart was really grand. And your mother-in-law is from Pangasinan, Philippines. So talk about what Filipino food has you been cooking and have you been to the Philippines and are you planning to teach your daughter Tagalog? Yes, um, you know, uh, she's from Pangasinan. I got to, I got to visit Pangasinan and um, see how life was lived there. And it was just incredible. It was just so calming and, and, and chill and also just went back to the, to the way of like, that village, how, how, you know, you had to pump water. Um, and then, you know, you had to, you had the chickens that are roaming around that was going to be possibly dinner. Uh, and, you know, you had the rice field. It was just beautiful to see that for me to appreciate the, um, not just where uh, Shelby's like ancestors are from and, and, and her mom is from, but just a respect for the culture, for Filipino culture. Uh, and, um, and I got to, it's so funny because Shelby got to put in the situation where she wasn't expecting it, but a whole community, they would have these um, kind of dances where, you know, other, other, other uh, younger folks got to come in and, and kind of meet people from different villages. And then they, my mom was just like pushed her to like perform. So she had to do this improv, improv um, she had to improvise this dance and do this whole thing where she wasn't expecting and just freestyling. And she's a beautiful dancer, wonderful dancer, but her biggest fear is actually improving dance. Um, but it was just, it was just awesome. Just this, uh, the feeling, the culture, what I love about the Filipino culture is just the sense of community. Cause you also have uh, the uncle that's singing karaoke while everyone's gathering and cooking food and just talking and that's just a normal day. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to cook bunset and uh, uh, which is one of my manager's favorite foods. So every time uh, uh, Shelby, uh, my, my mother-in-law, uh, Tessie comes and she's always asking for that. And um, I also, you know, I also, I also love this, which I'm trying to do is just, jumping shrimp recipe that it's like with like vinegar and uh um the way that but the way that it's been eaten you know you curl the tail and the head and then you dip the body it was just a cool experience um uh and i'm still learning i just got like this walk and super 
high heat and I, I can't wait to, to, to cook the different dishes um, and for her to come. And, and now that, you know, my daughter is, is really being introduced to food, solid foods, um, definitely uh, I want to introduce her to both our cultures, but specifically, I think my, my mother, uh, mother-in-law is definitely talking to her in Tagalog and Ilocano. Uh, so, you know, hopefully she absorbs that as much as possible. So you learned how to eat with your hands in the boodle fight? Oh, boodle fight. Yes, I didn't even talk about that. So that is my favorite thing. I, I, when we go, uh, her, uh, uh, my mother-in-law's sister, she would come and these, the boodle fights with the banana leaves, uh, they would come and um, my sister-in-law, she has a, she just gets it from her backyard, banana leaves, cuts it down and lays it across and to eat with your hands, I think it's just so liberating. It's just so freeing. And, and, and there's this really beautiful uh, gesture of like just eating with what God gave you, you know, and, and, and putting that in your mouth. There's this connection that I think you, you miss that when you're even using chopsticks or, or fork or spoon. And um, uh, that's something I look forward to every time there's a brutal fight. Uh, I, I'm in there with elbows. Like this is my space. I'm going to eat all my stuff in front of me. And so you just mentioned your uh, wife being a dancer. Both of you are dancers. Do you guys miss dancing? Uh, we do, you know, but we've been bringing that back because my daughter uh, pulls us and whether we're sitting down, she pulls us to get up and dance with her. And she has this really unique rhythm uh, that uh, just gives us flashbacks of like why we love dance and just the simplicity of, of moving your body to whatever the beat tells you to do is what we're seeing in her and uh and that, that's 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 something that we get to do every single day um so I, i'm excited to teach her more uh, of the stuff that we've learned but also i'm learning a lot of moves from her because she's creating these moves that i've never i've never seen <laughs> someone do with their bodies and um that's really 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 neat as um as someone who's just danced like for for such a long time to learn something uh, new from from this uh, not even two year old uh, that's coming up with these uh, these moves. So she's my new dance teacher now. So uh, would you allow your daughter to join show business if she decides to do that? If she wants to, you know, I think we we gained a lot of experience and and, and can give her a lot of advice on on the things that we've went, went through. Uh, um, I think it's just arming her with the knowledge and uh, if that tickles her and that's something that she wants to go down then I think it, it's it's great that you know she has us as kind of like a, a a book that she can kind of go to and ask questions but if she doesn't you know I'm 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 more than happy to see what she uh, gravitates towards um, but right now she's definitely performing so whether that's something she wants to do professionally cool but uh, I think that personality alone is gonna be great for whatever she decides she wants to do in the future. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite experiences and photos is the two of us dancing during the after party at the Golden Globes. So talk about your Golden Globe experience. Yes, I remember that. It's, you know, it is one of the special uh, award shows just because the setup of it and, and you know, the, the opportunities that you guys, uh, you guys collectively provide for films that might not get, uh, a recognition from certain uh, award shows, and and it, to me, it's uh, especially when you look at the dance and like being able to to, to dance with you, Jen. And I remember I remember first meeting you, and it was uh, I think it was one of those like uh, I think it was one of the Glee Glee part. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was one of the Glee parties, and and um, multiple times. But I just remember uh, the enthusiasm you had for for the show, but not, not even just that, but, you know, just representation and just seeing people that, you know, uh, we connect with and knowing that, you know, I had a connection with, with, uh, with kind of the Philippines through my wife. I just thought that was so cool. So I'm just so thankful for the uh, embrace, uh, embracing, um, you know, specifically stories that, that don't get to be uh, told uh, often. But the Golden Globe experience, of course, is wild. You have a drink in your hand. You're dancing with, with no care. And whoever's in front of you is your new dance partner. And it might switch over time. 
it's 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 something that I'll, I'll always remember, and and um, I'm always grateful to to just be there uh, and 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 to to be in the presence of so many talented talented people uh, uh, from the industry. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to be part of the Crazy Rich Asian sequel? And uh, tell us more about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to think that I'm still part of it. I, I you know, I'm not sure what's, uh, what is the process of it right now, but I know with 2020, it's kind of put a spin on, on every project that was uh, in development or whether in script form. Um, but I was just so thrilled to, to, to be part of it. I remember I had to, you know, I had a relationship with John before and I was just, I kept calling him and calling him, writing emails like, hey, how about this role? How about this role? And um, uh, him, you know, landing on, on, on Charlie Wu uh, that we saw in the mid credit scene, uh, I was just thankful to, to be part of it and to be around uh, this Avengers type cast uh, for this movie and, and, and how much excitement that it brought to a lot of people, even to this day, I know they've been showing it more on TV uh, uh, right now, and it was like trending on Twitter recently. And so I know the anticipation is real. Uh, I'm, I have, I'm anticipating it as well as just the fan uh, that is just so lucky to be um, part of the project. And and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we can find out more uh, from the powers to be to, to give us more information. I'm just, I'm just the little guy. Uh, that is along for the ride right now. If you had to talk to your younger self, what would you tell your younger self? Um, I would say to to honor patience. Um, I I knew I I know I would stress myself out when I was younger on wanting whatever it is I wanted like uh, right away. Um, you know I I my advice for myself uh you know when i was younger it's just like things will take time and you're going to be better for it that it did take take uh take time and I, I look back at like my career and you know it's taken a lot a lot longer than i thought it would um but i don't live with any regrets so i think it's important to tell not just my younger self but younger people who are where they're going through this industry or pursuing something that they have a passion for but not realizing that, you know, you have to lay the foundation down and sometimes that takes a little longer and nothing is really ever overnight, uh, um, whether you want to call it success or not, or just overnight experiences that are going to uh, uh, help shape you to make uh, the best decisions to, to make progress in whatever the thing that you, you love to do. And uh, Christmas is just around the corner. How are you guys planning to celebrate with this lockdown and pandemic? Uh, surrounding ourselves, we have like five Christmas trees, like little ones, big ones, and, <laughs> and some decorated, some not yet. Uh, and it's just a strange place to be in when you're in uh, California and the sun is just shining and uh, you're constantly adding water to the, to, uh, we have one real Christmas tree, the other ones are, are, are artificial, but um, you feel it, you feel it, that just like my daughter just loves lights. Uh, so I think it's just trying to create that environment for her to, to at least experience some sort of Christmas um, that, that she can recognize uh, and smell and, and feel this energy. And, and my, my wife, I was a little bit of a, I would say a little bit of a grouch uh, with, with, with Christmas because I'm like, oh, we got to put the lights up. And my wife really uh, uh, really helped me get out of that um, by being excited about the holidays and 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 just spreading that spirit of of joy and and we need that as much as possible, especially the year that we've all been having and 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 trying to find food banks and trying to find ways to give back so my daughter uh, doesn't recognize Christmas as just receiving gifts but also giving gifts and 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 helping others that that are less fortunate. Thank you very much, Harry, and for joining us. I hope to see you in person one of these yes, days. Yes, thank you, Jen. Take I hope care. I'll have a Budo fight with you in the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see you.